Oh my goodness. Over here. I'm so excited to start Boundless Bonita. This program has been on my heart and my soul and is the originality of my work over the last decade and to have you trust me on this journey and to embark on this journey and to invest in yourself, invest the time, invest the money, invest the space into something that I feel like a lot of us struggle with and often say, this is my year. This is my year. I'm going to focus on becoming more confident. I'm going to focus on showing up for myself and making these commitments and becoming the version of me that I want so badly inside of me. And you're here. And so I hope you're feeling that in your heart right now of not just any type of commitment. It's like, yes, I bought another program. I did another thing, da, 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 da. like passing it off is nothing because I truly believe, and this has changed my life, when we claim something as a big deal, it becomes a big deal. I remember the first time I invested in a program, the first time I stepped into a program, I was like, my life is going to forever change. And that's when everything started to shift and mold so quickly in my life because I started to give it the intentionality that I wanted. So... <clears throat> as you're coming in here, let that be this. Let that be boundless bonita that you look back and you're like, holy pickles. I'm going to look back at this time and I remember boundless bonita. I remember the three days that I stepped into this, that I had no clue really what I was doing. I just knew that I wanted to step into my body and I wanted to reclaim ownership over my body and revamp the way that I feel about my body. So I did. And then I started to learn that I could keep my commitment to myself and I could do these things like that is the journey you're going to say, right? And so if you are new to my world, I would love if you would come say hello, if you would share this with someone, if you would, you know, these things, it's so interesting because usually I do them live. Usually I do programs live and I get to interact with you and I get to do these things. And we will, if you're in the first round of this, have our Voxer group. Um, if you're not in the first round of this, we'll probably have a mastermind or something um, to support you in this. But, you know, when something is quote unquote self-paced, it's like in me where I'm like, did that really happen? Or like, You know, and so I, I would love for you to reach out and share your reflections with me over on Instagram. My Instagram is it's Laura Patricia Martin, ITS Laura Patricia Martin. And it's usually me or Cassandra in the inbox. And if it's something that's on the heart, like she will forward it to me. So I would love to know what comes up for you. I love to chat and actually keep my community, a community of like bougie, sexy savages that are like connected in this world. So come hang out and let me know what comes up for you and, you know, your insights and your takeaway. And if you feel called to share this, I love that too. And just building momentum. And if you are new to my world, my name is Laura Patricia Martin. You know, I always think about these things before jumping on and because this is a different type of quote unquote masterclass or program, like this is a behind the scenes, real version of my life. Like you guys are going to see me my practice is when I get out of the shower. <laughs> like you guys are getting the raw truth of me. Um, I've been thinking about, I'm like, what do I want y'all to like know about me? What do I want you to know? It's that I have always had this heart that cares so much about the people I love in my life, about the movement. Since four years old, I've said I wanted to change the world. And I like went to nursing when we still had, um, you know, bring your daughter to work day. My mom was a nurse and she brought me there and I saw blood and I was like, mm, not that. And then I was like, you know, this whole journey. And, You know, in my story, I have my certifications. I, you know, background is psychology and sociology and communication and certifications in nutrition and gut health and trauma and all these things. But none of that is 
yes, it's important, but but really it, it's me, my heart. And through life, I got dealt a big hand. You know, I have eating disorder. I remember when I was very young because I would stuff down my emotions because there was trauma happening around me. I have, you know, addictions of varying degrees. I have domestic violence. I have rape. I have, I lost my mom to addiction suddenly. Um, I've had suicidal ideation. I've had cheating. I've had manipulative men. I've had narcissism. Like these things, all these things that I do steal my joy. And I'd be lying to you if I said they did it. For a long time, I was so angry. So, so angry. And when I was 24, yeah, 24, it was like those knees on the floor moment when I was like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. And that's when I realized it was like, you don't, you don't have to, right? Like it, it wasn't that I didn't want to live my life anymore. It was that I didn't want to live my life this way anymore. Feeling like I'm at war with my body, always being self-conscious. It was in a domestically violent relationship at that time. I was so sick. Like I was chronically sick all the time. I was 40 pounds less than what I am now. Like I was trying to literally wither away and shrink myself enough so I couldn't be seen. And so I was grasping and trying to like, who am I? What am I really? And just grew into this like self-experimentation process and like education and throwing myself into these things. But it wasn't from a grounded place. It was from survival, right? And I built a very successful company out of that for IBS anxiety. And you'll hear me talk a little bit about food in this program, but not too much. Um, but it does relate to our body. So it, it's a big part of my practice, especially when it comes to body image. And this is where I started to tap into it because it was always like there was something that wasn't good enough. And maybe you feel this way. Maybe you have felt this way that there's always something else, right? There's never this moment of like, wow, I did it. I'm so healthy. I feel so good. I'm so in my body. I'm, I'm having the best sex in my life. I love my partner so much. Like there's always the human desire for something more. And it's, it's getting wrapped up in that. And especially when it comes to our body, it's like, it's always something else. It's not good enough yet. It's not good enough yet. There's always this um, romantic romanticizing the future versus the present. And I started to look at this stuff because after getting sick, like I had to surrender to stillness. I had to surrender to not being addicted to chaos. I had to surrender to not being distracted by men because I went on a no man diet for two years and birth sacred singlehood and all this stuff and traveled and discovered and, you know, realizing the concept of like, I don't actually know who I am yet. And so when I'm thinking of like, how do I want to introduce myself to you? It's like my heart, my heart. I want you to know my heart. You know how much I care about the people in my world, including you. You know, I may not physically know you or personally know you, but I feel the people in my world so much and I build these things for them. And I know specifically those that have wars against their bodies like I did, how frustrating that is, how annoying it is, how the conflict of like, I have goals and yet sometimes it's not healthy kind of thing like that I had a battle a deep battle with like orthorexia so healthy things that became unhealthy and not understanding that this trapped emotions in my body and the trauma in my body and all the things that I'm walking you the beginning stages in this program is like you know that four-year-old dream in me to change the world I truly believe it does start with creating a home in your body 
you know, I, I specialize in relationships, right? Like that's, that's my thing. Like I help people get iconic relationships and step into their personal power and create businesses from this like, ugh, space. Like you get to have everything you want in life. And I truly fucking believe that. I truly believe that. But it starts with being home, being here, being a living sanctuary, being safe, knowing yourself and treating yourself like someone you love from the moment you wake up in the morning, from the moment your head hits the pillow at night. Did I do my best? Am I doing my best? And that best does not mean perfect. We get tripped up in that often. Best means today is best, right now is best. So that's what I'm asking of you in this program. I'm asking for you to give it your best. That doesn't mean you're doing all the practices. That doesn't mean you're putting off the checklists and like, if I don't do this, therefore I fail. Like if I don't get all this stuff done, I'm going to fail. It's, it's giving the highest version of you. If, if the healed version of you, if the best version of you, if the version of you at the end of this year, how would she show up to this? What would be the commitment? And like, choose a word, choose a word what you want or choose like what's your intention what's your intention for this program mine is to give you my heart right and what you can expect of this program is that I give you the tools I give you the mindset I give you my raw honesty you know this whole thing is a documentary style so if you're coming into this and you're like I'm expecting like these programs and these slides and these decks and these things like Trust that you're in the right place for this teaching style. It's different. I wanted to do something different. That's literally what we're doing all year is just how can we create innovation in the personal development space that keeps it engaging and actually shows you how to apply these tools and, you know, just, just expanding the vision for this. And so trust that you're in the right place. You know, oftentimes when we come to something and we feel you know, oh, I wouldn't have done it this way. And it's, oh, I wouldn't have done it that way. Or, oh, and we kind of have these things. You know, my mentor was kind of talking about this. of like, oh, we go to, you know, yoga class. And it's like, oh, I wish it was faster. Or, oh, I wish it was slower. Oh, I wish it was this. And it's usually, we're, it's that's from a space of, that's what we know. So we want it to be exactly how we want it to be because that makes us feel safe because we're in control. But if we actually do this, luscious part of our you know sacred slut that I'm going to kind of talk about a little bit in the, I mean I talk about it in this program but in this kind of way this energetic way where it's like that part of us wants this like mystery and this like surprise but that kind of drives us nuts too right so when we see things and it's not the way that we want it to be it's like it's not the way um and then we want to pressure on it and we want to do these things when really it's like how can I be surprised if my highest intention is to give this my best, how can I be surprised? And that's the energy I desire because I'm giving you my best. I'm giving you my tools. I'm giving you my thought processes. I'm giving you my heart, my soul. Like this is the work of my life to date. I am so excited to look back on this in three years time and be like, oh my God, I love her so much you know, and I'm so excited to have you here with me. And so why body image or why boundless, right? So what I've known in my time is the bounds body image puts on us because of society, because of family, because of friends, because of school systems, life, social media. We are bounded by how we feel and really truly believe we think we're supposed to look and that takes us out of our joy and that puts us into these trauma responses and these obsessive thought patterns and these intrusive thought patterns and we stop dating in the way that we want and we're so caught up in you know how do I look when I'm having sex or we avoid eye contact or body contact of our own selves in the mirror and then expect our relationships to feel like it, it can validate our our human existence when we can't even do that ourselves 
And so when, when you're looking at the bounds, real is really, when you're looking at the bounds, it's like, oh, I'm pretty caught up in this. I'm not showing up fully in my life because of this. Like, what would it feel to actually be free of this? To have the confidence, to know the voice, to speak in a way that feels comfortable, to dress in a way that feels good, to have sex in a way that I am not thinking about my body in the process. I am so, oh, cloud nine. I'm so in my body and being raptured and, oh. I feel so good. I literally have chills as I speak like that. Like, what would that feel like? To me, that's what boundless is. You're free. You're home. You're safe to explore. Who are you really? Because the truth is you have no idea. You know who you are based on your life lived experience. You know who you are because of where you were planted. You know, when we start to create the habits and the belief systems and the tools and the coping mechanisms and the upper limiting beliefs and all these coping, all these protection, all these forms of protection. We really don't know. And so if you're playing the stranger in your life, What would it feel like to be boundless? What do you like? What are your hobbies? What are the way that you want to adore your body? You know, without the pressures of the society, societal things of, you know, women are supposed to look this way. And this is actually their forms of achievement. It's how they look. Fuck their brains, right? How they look. And dismantling all these things of like, what do you want it to mean for you? How do you want to get safe around that? And you know, we we have the forms of trauma that come up in our life because body image issues is a form of a trauma symptom, right? And it could be big T trauma. It could be, you know, like I said, for me, it was rape and domestic violence and rejection and abandonment and then eating disorder and all these kind of things that led to my body image issues. But it could be little T trauma. Be something, someone said something one time in middle school. Could have been some one mean boy said something. It could be you had your heart broken and you made up the narrative about it and therefore you stuck to that clung to that belief. You know, trauma is a spectrum. But if we're struggling with body image issues, that's that's where we have to look. And trauma isn't something we can just cerebrally study. This is why this is not a slide deck master, master class. This is why you're not studying things. Yes, I'm teaching you stuff, but I want you to become the embodiment of this. You know, and as always, none of this is medical advice. Run everything by your doctor. It's This is all from my personal experience, from my studies, from these things. And You know, it's up to you of how you want to apply it and run it by whomever. But this is my lived experience. This is how I've healed. This is what I know to be true for me and my clients and people within my programs. And how you can then apply it and why I want to give you a backstage pass, right? And so there's different varying degrees. I'm going to read my notes over here. I'm different body image different varying elements of body image, right? So we have body dissatisfaction, which is a general unhappiness with your body or its parts. You're just not satisfied with the way God created you. Or an overvaluation of weight and shape, which is basing who you are as a person almost entirely on what you think or what you look like or what the number on the scale tells you. So This is when we're sitting there and it's like getting our body image confused with our self-image. We're going to bring it back to what your true self-image is. Okay. We have body preoccupation, which is obsessively thinking about your body. This is what we see when it's like, tell me you can relate to this or not. But I remember when I gained 40 pounds and all I could think about was if they were thinking about my weight. all I could think about which may be not present 
for that person or that partner or anytime we were intimate. Like it was, I couldn't get in. I was so obsessed with it. Body checking, when you're repeatedly checking your weight or your shape or, you know, looking at, you know, what are you doing in the mirror, checking on the scale, all these kind of things. Like you're just always checking your body. This one was so hard. This one for a lot of my clients, especially those that are coming off of like CrossFit times, or for me, I was big into competitions and like F45 and running and things of that nature. And so just always checking the body image, you know, and to, I remember working with my client Brianna around this, where it was such a big one. Cause it's, it's like an addiction. Cause we already have that neural pathway happening. And so it's like this, I know think of it like a garden, like think of your brain, like a garden. And so if you have a path that's already been, or not even a garden, think of it like a jungle, frigging jungle. And you've macheted it. You've walked through and you're like, you've cleared that pathway, but it took work because it was a repetition to get there. This is what, this is why body checking is so hard to break because we're so used to it. That pathway is done. So when we're not doing it, not stepping on the scale, not looking in the mirror. It's it's just like a twitch where you're like, and it feels weird at first because that pathway that you machete down has already been cut. So it's it's how do we chop another machete one? And that's the practicing. I'm going to walk you through some mirror practices. I'm going to walk you through some self-love and actually how to regulate your nervous system around this and noticing your subconscious thoughts and things of that nature inside of this program. You know, there's the body image avoidance. You see this a lot where it's um wearing a lot of baggy clothes we do this a lot especially with like sexual trauma I see this like I want to drown myself out I want to hide um or if we've gained weight from postpartum or COVID or life and stress things that happen we like to wear baggy things as a way to hide ourselves and so we're avoiding our body and then it it shows up in relationship because, well, then I can't date until I lose X amount of pounds or, you know, what if, when I take this sweater off, what, what is he going to think? Or you can't even, again, going back to the, you can't even be present on a date or you're not present in the bedroom. These things show up all the time. And it's, it's really removing that because if you're avoiding your own body, of course, it's going to be hard to feel present during intimate moments with friends, family, working, doing things like this, like all of it. Cause we're just so obsessed with these thoughts and, you know, we're, because we've avoided it now it's like, oh, what if they find out? We get rid of that. Oh, what if they find out when we come to terms with what is And this isn't to say that you can't have goals. I'm going to talk about this in day three. You can definitely have goals, but when you actually regulate yourself and it comes from a grounded place, we have the feeling of fat. I feel fat. I feel fat. I just feel so fat. Like I said, how many of you haven't said that? And this is just the somatic sensation of feeling fat. Someday, like around our moon, of course like your 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 body is literally shifting to prepare for a child and that's when we start to hold a little bit more and it's like feel fat and it's like or are you preparing to hold a child because the women's body is fucking magnificent it's so beautiful can we stop shaming those aspects and it, it's okay that like some days are different but like understand your body and if you don't understand your body we'll take maybe the metabolism because it's just understanding that we go through these waves, we go through these systems, and it's one of the most beautiful things. Women's body generally fluctuate between five pounds. <laughs> like, it, it's just a normal thing. And so it, it's this, like, we we believe it to hold so much reality as opposed to just, like, is the mirror playing tricks on me? Have I slept well? Did I poop recently? Am I about to get my period? What's going on? right? Like having some reality around it. We have, you know, the fear of weight gain, like an irrational, illogical, and harmful fear. This is where eating disorders come from, right? Of just everything. I remember when I had um, anorexia, it was just like every single thing I thought I was 8,000 pounds. 
but that's the eating disorder brain. That's the addiction brain. It plays tricks on you. This is why high level support is so important. This is why iconic or therapy, you know, I've done therapy. I have my mentors. None of us are doing it on our own. No one, because our brain's going to play tricks on us. So investing in the person that you drive on with is so important when it comes to healing these things. We have thin idealization. Oh my God, this is one where we live in a society where it used to be the round woman. So you look at, go to any art exhibition. They got their little tummies. They got their curves. They're beautiful. They used to lead tribes, the shape of the moon. The moon is feminine. Like we lost it when we started to become hairless men. And now we're trying to have bodies like hairless men. The thing about a woman is the curves, baby. It shows that you are fertile. It shows that you are bodacious and beautiful. And I know, you know, sometimes it's like, I can't get it. I can't gain weight. I can't do things. It's like, this is why there's so many varying degrees. Cause I remember it was like, I couldn't gain weight. And then I couldn't, I couldn't stop gaining weight. And it's like this back and forth, wherever you're at is perfect. Confidence comes from claiming that. Confidence doesn't come from society. Confidence comes from your internal belief. A woman could be wearing her pajamas. I actually tested this one time. I went out to a club with my friend in pajamas. I was like, I don't feel like going. She was like, let's go. Like, okay, I'm not changing. <laughs> a woman that loves herself and knows herself can wear whatever. And she exudes that. It's not from the bells and the whistles. That's why half the time you're seeing me in my robe throughout this entire thing without makeup on, fresh, hair everywhere, sweaty, whatever. It's not about that. It's about your ownership over who you are. And then we have body dysmorphia, which is one of the biggest ones I see people struggle with because it's believing you're a different size, your reflection in the mirror, you're like obsessed with different aspects of your own body of like how they look mine used to be my arms and it's still something sometimes it'll creep up and I'm like there you are you sneaky little eating disorder brain hm, how can I love you today like what do you need how can I boom this up and make you feel like you are worthy as you are you are loved as you are you are perfect as you are like this is that's the artist recognizing there's so many different elements of body image and wherever you fall on that maybe it's all of them maybe it's some of them maybe it's one we're gonna go through the series we're gonna truly feel this stuff we're gonna feel in the body it's not just the awareness like the thing that's so big about shadow work is that I don't want you to only just become aware of something. This is what I see wrong in this industry. This is what I see that's kind of my like about therapy is you become aware of something and then there's nothing to move it out. There's nothing to do to reprogram, right? So my biggest thing is I kept going to therapy. I kept doing the things and I'd leave more activated. I'd leave more triggered. I'd relieve more in a self-loathing thing because I would notice a pattern and I'd be like, fuck, fuck. Like I'm not changing it, fuck. Like in getting so mad at myself because I wasn't fixing it when I knew better. And the reason it wasn't getting fixed is because it wasn't getting reprogrammed. There was nothing to replace that coping mechanism because that's all it is. All it is, self-sabotage is just self-protection. So what you've learned, that's all it is, but we got to replace it. So it's becoming aware and it's like witnessing. And then it's just like, we're not going to get it perfect every time. We're not. You're going to notice when you're looking in the mirror and you're like, you know, like you're going to notice it. But witnessing that thought from the loving human you are right now, witnessing those thoughts from a space of like, it's your little sister. And you're like, babe, it's okay. Do you need something? Do you need a hug? Like you're good? We'll catch it next time. We'll do it next time. You know, I talk about this in relationships a lot where it's like, you're not the nicest person. And you're like, fuck. But it's just the awareness of that. And then you start to shift that pattern of like, what do I want to do next? When do, how did I feel that in my body before it came up? 
you know, did I eat today? Did I sleep today? What's going on here? And like, it's these kind of awareness tools that help us shift the pattern. So if you're feeling activated, I don't want you to just <clears throat> only become aware of something. And then you shift it. Use the tools we go through. Pick some. You don't have to do them all. You'll see a checklist of things that you can use. Like, you don't have to use everything. Pick one. I tell you in this module how I picked making my bed was my first form of self-love practice. That was six years ago. And now I built a global brand on this. You know, you never know where these things are going to take you. It's just being truly honest and accepting where you're at. Where are you really taking inventory on that? And then starting to take action and starting to build. What tools do we need? And don't let that self-saboteur come in and be like, idiot. Because then you're compounding negative emotion on top of a negative habit. And we want to compound positive emotion on top of new positive habits. Right? So it's just witnessing. And it's like, oh, there she is again. There's that thought. Wow. I really like my eyes today. I really, you know, yeah, it's okay. It's okay that I'm a little bloated, but like, look at my boobs, you know, like learning to have conversation with yourself as you would your best friend, as you would your little sister, as you would your lover. And we hear this all the time, but the way humans are, it's so funny. You know, we're taught shame and guilt to keep us in order. Humans are so interesting. That's why I've been studying them for decades. Like we treat our dogs better than ourselves because we have this internal belief because only you know the guilt that you hold. Only you know the things that you've done that aren't so great. Only you know these things, right? Like we deem everyone else in society as beautiful beings and they don't deserve, you know, loathing or whatever it is. Like they don't deserve bad things. Like we hear stories about people and we're like, oh, no one deserves something like that. But I'm sure if you took a microphone in your head and you heard the things that you were saying to yourself, for some reason, you think you're not worthy of the same love that your dog gets or your niece gets or your child gets or your spouse gets. And so I really want to ship that inside of Boundless Bonita. I really am excited to shift that, to recognize and understand how to treat yourself like someone you are in love with and responsible for and honor and you come first in life because we've been taught to self-abandon and self-please and, and or people please for too long. And so it's time to make your life in art form. It's time to, you know, notice when the triggers are coming up and they're responding from the past. And then you're like, oh, I, that's my child self that wasn't strong enough and capable of doing this type of work. But now, now I'm this adult version of self and I'm going to, I can help her carry that weight. I can help her heal this. I'm fucking here for her. I love her so much that there's no fucking way that this wouldn't work. And so we're going to go on this journey together. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to be here. I'm going to guide you. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm in your corner. My only request is that you put two feet in. You make this mean something. Not just another master class. Not just something that we do in a few. Like taking the space. Whether you need one day in between or you want to do that at your own pace but like making the commitment that I'm going to finish this within the week I'm going to finish this within the week and each day when I'm learning something I'm going to choose one tool that I'm going to start being aware of an inch by inch you're going to be on your way to something beautiful and iconic and revolutionary and amazing and the sky isn't even the limit when you commit to making something meaningful Okay. Also inside of this, you're going to hear me talk about programs. You're going to hear me talk about iconic. You're going to hear me talk about backstage pass. 
I talk about things because I love them and I created them from my genius, from my work, and they go with different parts that I talk about. And if there's different parts within this program that if you want to dive deeper into it, like if you want to dive deeper into your sacred slut, sig duchess, or becoming that bitch is where you want to tap in. If you want to, you know, tap into your living sanctuary, that's where sacred singlehood is. If you want to tap more into your bougie CEO, savage self, it's becoming that bitch. It's looking at your attachment styles. It's looking at your balance um, through unattached or about codependency and there's just so much so I talk about all of them where they fit don't be surprised don't be alarmed if you feel like joining them reach out if you don't and this is where we stop our friendship it doesn't stop here because we're connected and we always will be and I will see you somewhere on the internet I'm just thankful that you're here but if you do want to continue that you can just personally reach out to me on Instagram and just tell me which program that you want and I'll send you the link um, and we can go from there and then some of the spaces are limited, pending if it's um, iconic or not. Depends when you watch this, if I'm open or available for that, which is my highest level of mentorship. So there will be certain deals for you. I don't know when you're going to be watching this, right? So pending when you tap in, there might be certain discounts because you went into this program. So just reach out to me. Me or my team will get back to you and we will let you know. Um, but other than that, let this program shift you. Let this program be the thing that awakens you. And if you feel like doing this for a year, that's where Backstage Pass comes in. You get a year long of doing programs like this with me. And if you feel like this is what you needed to get going, like, it's just claiming that, like it's truly claiming that inside of every part of you. When you start to make things matter, life starts to have more meaning. And it starts with you claiming that. It starts with you putting two feet in. It starts with you showing up, make the commitment. That's my act. Okay. I love you. And I will see you somewhere on the internet.